Our gospel reading for tonight comes from the book of Matthew, the 10th chapter. Jesus said these words, Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the gospel of the Lord. And I invite you to please be seated. When you were a, when you were a kid, when you were just a kid, do you, did you have sort of rules, uh, special rules when guests were around the house, when grandma and grandpa came over to visit or when the relatives came into town or when you had friends over, at least around my house, we had some special, special rules. Anyone remember when guests were over to your house and, and maybe it was uh, for a big summer barbecue or a picnic or, or Thanksgiving dinner when mom had finished putting out that big old spread of food out there and she hollered out, it's time to eat, Right? And you came running to the table of food and seeing this enormous spread of food just salivating, huh? You grabbed that plate and you reached out to grab a chicken leg or that hamburger. And just as you reached out to snatch that food from the table, you felt this big, huge hand on your shoulder. Your father forcefully grabbing you by the shoulder, your mom grabbing you by the ear, pulling you away from the table, turning you around, and I'd guess your parents said something like my parents told me, when we have company around, guests eat first, right? Guests eat first, right? Or a day or two uh, before, uh, my crazy aunt and uncle came to visit, I'd get those words from my, my mom and dad to clean up my room, and I knew what this meant. You had to clean up your room because you were getting kicked out of your room because guests don't sleep on the couch. Right. Oh, maybe it's happened in your house too, huh? Or worse, oh, the worst was when Grandma and Grandpa would come to visit. When Grandma and Grandpa came to visit, uh, late in the afternoon, my mom and dad, they'd point to the car and say, let's load up the car. And we knew, we knew it was that dreaded afternoon drive with Grandma and Grandpa. Grandma and Grandpa loved to go for a drive, which meant we were stuck in the car for the next two hours. Huh? When guests come around, there are different rules, right? I mean, we make some exceptions. We clean our homes. Rules change. We go out of our way to make sure people feel welcome. Those guests who come to our house, right? We welcome them warmly, and we do things differently when guests are around. Well, our reading today, our reading from the Gospel of Matthew, mentions the word welcome five times in three verses, and so though I'm a little slow, folks, I'm going to assume, I'm going to assume the author of the book of Matthew wanted those ancient people way back when to think about how they welcome. He wanted them to think about uh, what a welcome looks like. Who is welcome? How, how do they welcome strangers who are in their midst, huh? Now, this may not sound like a big deal, but let me tell you, way back when, this was a very big deal. It was a very big deal. Now, this is going to sound a little strange, but way back when, if you welcomed someone into your home, if you provided some kind of measure of hospitality to just an individual, you weren't just welcoming that one individual. huh? You were welcoming their entire family their entire family. You were, your hospitality opened the doors not just for one, but for their entire family, maybe even their entire tribe, their, their people. Welcoming one meant welcoming all. Welcoming all. I had a really good friend who spent 20 years 
uh, in Liberia, where he worked with youth and with uh, young adults. And while living there in Liberia, he befriended hundreds of Liberian kids and their families. Upon returning to Minnesota, What's interesting is he soon, as he arrived here in Minnesota, not that long after, he soon began, began receiving phone calls from his Liberian friends. Liberians who now lived in Minnesota also who needed a job, maybe. Liberians who needed help immigrating to the states due to unrest. There was a civil war going on in Liberia. Liberians who wanted to go to school at the University of Minnesota. Liberians who needed help with this or with that. By welcoming a few into his life, my buddy Wes, he welcomed all. He welcomed all. He was a friend to all. He was a brother to all. I imagine, folks, that that's how it was way back when in the ancient world. You welcome one, you welcomed his or her family their tribe, their clan. You welcome their people into their lives. I don't know about you, but I think uh, this would put kind of a kibosh on some of our Minnesota nice every once in a while. I think I'd be a little more careful about who I offered hospitality to. Huh? And for my buddy Wes, as you can imagine, it wasn't always fun and games. To those Liberian friends who needed help with tuition, he's given thousands of dollars over the past 20 years to those friends from Liberia, to those who needed jobs. He provided jobs at the facility he worked, needing to convince management that these recent immigrants were really quality employees, even though sometimes they didn't work out. Wes even cared for some of their children as though they were his own, all at a considerable cost to himself. You can't just welcome one. When you welcome one, you welcome all. It, we might say you welcome the good, the bad, and the ugly. Huh? Uh, some of you are married, right? I can see it in your eyes. Huh? Some of you are married. You remember what it was like when you dated this amazing, uh, amazingly attractive person. You were courting them, falling in love with this person, this person who was spectacular in every way. And then as you got more and more re uh, serious with this person, you started to realize that you had no idea what you were getting yourself into when you welcome this person into your life because this perfect person you want to spend the entire, your entire life with, well, all of a sudden you find out they're actually human. Huh? They're actually human. That with this beautiful person might come some debt. Huh? Or maybe some bad credit. Or he or she comes with weird, quirky things like a cat. Huh? Or maybe she leaves her retainer on the bathroom counter or he has ugly toes or bad breath in the morning. Uh, worse yet, he or she comes with in-laws. Huh? Now, don't lie. You remember. You remember that day when you first met your in-laws, right? I'm sorry if they're sitting next to you today. You met your future in-laws, and you went, really? He, she came from you? How is that possible? And then you met the rest of the family, your, your future spouse's family, those crazy aunts and uncles, the delinquent future brother-in-law, the eccentric sister-in-law, and you realized for the first time you don't get one without the others. You're stuck with this clan, huh? The good, the bad, and the ugly. And in your quiet moments, I'm going to guess, if you're like me, you freak out a bit because you realize that in order to love this person, Huh? with all your might, with all your heart, with everything you are, if you're going to spend the rest of your life with him or with her, you're going to have to, well, you're going to have to give up some control, right? You have to give up some control to really love. Life isn't going to be the same because you can't control it all. These people are who they are. You can't change them, and so you love them or you leave them, right? Well, throughout the book of Matthew, the book of Matthew, Jesus is trying to get across that the entire purpose he came to earth is to establish what he calls the kingdom of God. If you've been in church for a few weeks, we've been talking about this. 
It's this new way of living, this new way of being, and it's all centered in this radical love and mercy and, and this stuff we call grace. It's a, it's a way of life that turns things upside down. The last become first, the first are last, the tables are turned, and it's in the midst of creating this kingdom of love and mercy and grace that Jesus offers these words today about welcome. Welcome. It's central to the kingdom of God, the world, the life that God wants for us, this unique sense of welcome. Now, thinking about how we've talked about welcome here, you can imagine that this ruffled a whole lot of feathers because this meant a whole lot of inconvenience for those people who were following Jesus. Jesus, we can't do that. We can't welcome all, Jesus. We can't be so welcoming. How could we possibly do that? Hmm. I think most of us are kind of like that, aren't we? We Minnesotans. We love being welcoming, but, but, if we're honest, we don't always like change, right? We don't always like losing control. Uh, are there any folks here who are simply summer residents here in Alexandria? Anybody here? Now you're not going to raise your hand, huh? Well, if there are, I'm going to apologize because I have to talk to the rest of you for a minute. I need to talk to the locals for a minute because those of you who are locals know this. We welcome the summer crowd to the lake every year, don't we? And we love that they come. They come and clamor to our restaurants. They spend money in our stores. We love the business it creates in the summer. We love they spend a whole lot of cash here in the summer. We love when you come and they purchase boats and snow machines and all that kind of stuff, but, but, but when you out-of-towners, those out-of-towners start clogging up Main Street on Friday afternoon, we locals get kind of cranky, don't we? Amen? Yeah, yeah, now you're going to be quiet. You don't want to admit it, huh? Yeah. Uh, or when you come and you start changing things, huh? We don't like that. When those out-of-towners come and raise the home values and our taxes with it, we don't like that. When, our, when their kids start partying on the lake and causing a ruckus, we're not all that welcoming, huh? Because I think we feel like we're losing a little control. Being welcoming, you know this, being welcoming, really inviting people into your life and your world involves losing a little control, letting go, and yes, it even means a little change. Maybe it even means that we change now and then. Huh? If you're married, how many of you, how many of you uh, would say that you honestly have not changed uh, due to your spouse since the day you were married? Okay. Right. Right. Not a one of us would say that. Welcoming someone into your life means you're going to change. It means change. To be serious for just a minute, I suspect, I suspect this is why we live in such a racially segregated country. Huh? We're a pretty homogenous bunch if we look around here. Huh? Uh, really welcoming someone means that we might have to change, and we fear that, huh? We fear losing control. We fear that the presence of someone different might force me to change. Folks, if you watch TV, you know immigration is a big deal in our country. It's a hot-button issue. Folks, immigrants are not involved in any more criminal activity than the rest of us. Immigrants are people like you and me who are trying to raise their families. They're not a threat to our national security. They pay taxes like you and me, huh? And we know the more diversified our country is, the more it represents the world God wants for us. Folks, the reason we struggle with immigration is that when someone new comes into the family, we know things are going to change, and it scares us. We fear losing control. We do this in church, too. We welcome all. We say that, but way back when, if you were a Norwegian, we'd say, well, you just keep on walking down to first, huh? Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, the church said for a long time. That is, except if you're divorced. If you're a woman, you can worship here, but don't you think you can be a pastor, huh? Hmm. Oh, and make sure if you're going to come to this church, you wear your Sunday best. Huh? This image that Jesus gives us 
of what the kingdom of God is supposed to look like. This way of welcoming, it isn't, it isn't selective, but it's about all. And I admit I hate it and I love it. I hate it because I'm not all that good at letting go, of losing control, but I love it because I know without a doubt that I'm fully, fully accepted. Folks, you and I, we were first welcomed by Jesus, right? As we celebrate baptism, we name that Jesus welcomes all. Little Brody was welcomed into our family of faith. And when God embraces, welcomes, invites you and me, that means God's stuck with us. The good, the bad, and the ugly. And welcoming us, God, God's letting go. Knowing that things are going to change, God lets go, allowing us to live in freedom and letting go leads to consequences for God. When Jesus came in and welcomed all, there were consequences. We call those consequences the cross. But that's the kind of love God wants in God's world. That's what it means to really welcome and accept and open our arms. That's how God, well, that's how God loves you and me. With a love we can't, we just can't imagine. Thanks be to God. Amen.